Attention all personnel. Incoming podcast. This is MASH Matters. Hey, Jeff. Yes, Ryan. Are you superstitious? Superstitious? Yes. (laughs) Only if I'm wounded. If I'm wounded, I'm very superstitious. Uh, Yes, I... Well, uh, okay, truthfully, a little bit. Just a little bit. Might maybe, yeah. Why do you ask, Ryan? Because this is episode number 13. (sighs) You know, if anything bad is going to happen, I guess it will happen on this episode, right? What do you mean bad happen? What could happen bad? I don't want anything bad to happen. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to tune into the entire episode here and see if we make it through or not. Yeah. See if we can avoid (laughs) catastrophe. I know some (laughs) listeners are going, hey, the past 12 episodes have been catastrophic. (laughs) But no, uh, this is episode number 13. Hopefully it will not be an unlucky episode for us. And I know we're going to go ahead and give you a little tease here. I know for a fact that episode 14 is not going to be an unlucky episode because we have a special guest and we will make that big announcement coming up at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. This is a good one. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. (laughs) No, it's going to be good. So stick around for that. But in the meantime, let's dive into some listener questions and uh, comments and voicemails, too. In fact, we're just going to go ahead and jump in and lead off with a voicemail. And by the way, if you uh, would ever want to call and leave a voicemail, You can do that by calling 513-436-4077. So here is a voicemail from Dave. Hi, guys. Uh, My name is Dave, calling from Port Ritchie, Florida, just slightly north of uh, Clearwater. A couple things. I wanted to say that uh, a couple of uh, scenes that I like really a lot that Jeff did were uh, the one where he's shooting the cannon and it hits radars. Bugle. I was just curious, you know, if Jeff, if, if there was really any gunpowder in that. I realized there wasn't a, a musket ball or a cannonball, but I didn't know if there was any real gunpowder. And the uh, second one I like is when Winchester got all the newspapers and uh, Jeff came running toward him and said, I need the classifieds. I need to get a job. I thought that was great. But Back in uh, 1982, when the show went off the air, the final episode, I was a sergeant in the Army stationed in Fort Hood, and I had watched it for many years. The night that the final episode was co- was coming on, I was assigned 24-hour duty that night, which, as a sergeant, I mean, it only happened maybe once every three months. It kind of rotated, and it just so happened that my turn was on the night of the final episode so i had to pay another sergeant 25 bucks to pull my duty so i could uh stay at home and watch the episode but um you guys doing a great job with the podcast uh appreciate it thanks very cool very cool story well first i just want to say and we've said it before but uh, allowing me to get close to any kind of gunpowder would probably be a terrible mistake. So, no, there wasn't any uh, gunpowder of any shape, color, or size in that episode at all. <laughs> <laughs> no no gunpowder was harmed during the shooting. Uh, I, I mean, not, no pun intended, during the filming of that episode. <laughs> Nor were there any musket balls. So, <laughs> however, that's not the real exciting part so just to recap he was stationed at fort hood and ended up being forced to work the night of the finale when the finale aired on cbs in 1983 so he ends up paying a sergeant 25 dollars to take his place just so he could go and watch the finale. That's amazing. I mean, you got to really like MASH. You know, and all he's talking about all that duty uh, on all that uh, bad duty. I had bad duty when I had bad fish. But anyway, I don't want to go in that direction. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dave. Oh, see, I'm telling you, we're cursed. This episode is cursed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Dave, right? It is Dave. It is Dave, yes. You're Ryan, and this is Dave. <laughs> but but we were struck, weren't we? We were struck by his uh, what he had to go through and that it, that the fact that he paid $25 to listen to MASH. And it, it really touched my heart hearing that somebody was that into the MASH show that they would do that. So what are we going to do about that? We feel that there is something unfair in the universe that he had to do that, and he paid 25 bucks out of his own pocket 
just to watch the last episode of MASH. So therefore, Ryan and I, we have decided to repay Dave his $25 in the form of a gift card. Yes. So Dave, you're going to get your 25 bucks back. Compliments of MASH Matters. Ryan Patrick and Jeff Maxwell are going to fill your coffers. Is that right? Coffers? <coughs> or, or pocket. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, sure. covered. No, never mind yeah. about the covers. Let's go back to the duty joke. Nah, never mind. De- <laughs> help me, Ryan. <laughs> help me. I'm going off the cliff. Isn't I mean, isn't that a kind of a fun thing to do? We think it's fun. I think so. Absolutely. Now, I'm going to tell you, if you adjusted for inflation from 1983 to 2019, that would actually come out to sixty four dollars and thirty five cents. But Dave, uh, we love you, but we're we're only going to send you twenty five dollars. Sorry, we're not adjusting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's we're very happy that it was only 25 bucks, too, because if you give them yes. 300 bucks. And this is the only time we're going to do this. So I don't want to hear any new voicemails coming in going, you know, <laughs> well, I had to pay a guy one hundred and eighty seven dollars. <laughs> Dave was the first. He wins. OK, <laughs> yeah. I lost my cattle ranch because I was watching that darn television show. You boys going to have to fix me up now. No, that ain't going to happen. Sorry, Tex. Ain't happening. No. So, uh, so Dave, anyway, we, we will get in touch with you to get your mailing address or something so we can send you a gift card courtesy of Jeff and Ryan here at Mash Matters. Ta-da! Thank you, Dave. That was an awesome voicemail, awesome story. And uh, we love hearing these stories about Mash and how it impacted people's lives, where they were, when it was on the air, how it's still impacting them today. And for him to call up and, and tell us that story from 1983, just it made our day. So thank you, Dave, for that. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your service, by the way, as well. Yes. Our next question comes from Facebook from Sue Ann Nicole. Nicole Alderice. I hope I pronounced your last name correctly there. She said, I just started listening today. I've already listened to three podcasts and I can't wait to listen to more. I do have a question, Ryan. I can accept you hating Klinger's big fluffy bird stunt. (laughs) She knows that she is a lover of it, but she says, I never explained why. Can I enlighten everyone? So this goes back two episodes ago where I professed to the MASH nation that the scene where Klinger tries to escape via hang glider, uh, that is my probably my least favorite scene in all of MASH. And I think why I didn't like it is because it took the silliness quotient of the show up to 11. Sure, there were other moments in the show that were silly. I, I never really considered MASH to be a wacky, silly kind of a, a sitcom. But that moment was just beyond silly. What was, I mean, seriously, what was Klinger thinking? That he was going to be able to escape Korea on a hang glider? Yeah. He was going to fly all the way back to Toledo mm-hmm. on a hang glider? Oh, yeah, that that would work. Sure. Uh-huh. It It just rubbed me the wrong way. So I know I'm in the minority. When it comes to this scene, people love it. And I, I threw it back to Sue Ann and asked her, why do you love it? And she said uh, she loves it for the exact same reason that I didn't like it. Uh, she says, yes, it's outrageous. So is dressing in Scarlett O'Hara's outfit and expecting to get out of the army in a unit that knows all your antics. I get it. She She has a great argument there. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm just saying that it's my least favorite moment from the series. And apparently uh, she has some inside information. She says that Jamie Farr kept the pink fuzzy slippers. So maybe it's one of Jamie Farr's favorite moments from the episode. Uh, if it is, uh, he's probably not going to come on our podcast now because we've bad mouthed it. Yeah. Anyway, I, I hope that helps you, Anne. And I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it either. I, to, for the same reasons, I thought it was really silly and just up the silly quotient way too much. It just kind of didn't work for me. And, you know, if it, if it was crazy enough for everybody to enjoy it, uh, sure, that's OK. But boy, it sure didn't work for me either. Didn't like it. So Will McGregor, he wrote in and said, Jeff and Ryan love the show. I'm glad to see people enjoy MASH as much as I do. I love the content of your show to hear new stories of behind the scenes. He says, I have the complete series and watch it on a weekly basis. One of my favorite episodes is Hawkeye season four, episode 18 where Hawkeye crashes his Jeep and is with a Korean family for the whole episode. Well, thank you, Will. Now, Hawkeye is an episode that is um, 
Uh, there, it's it's one of those divisive episodes uh, among MASH fans. Some people love it. Other people, not so much. Some people view it as an ego-driven episode for Alan Alda. And other people see it as a really kind of a significant episode in the character of Hawkeye. So before I, I, I go any further and read a little bit more into it, Jeff, what, what were your feelings on that episode? Well, for me, it was a very uh, significant day. At MASH, I was there and I was watching the scene be shot and watching that monologue that he does basically for the whole show. And uh, it was the moment that I was absolutely, totally and completely impressed and fell in love with everything that Alan Alda did. Hmm. I, I certainly liked him before that and I was aware of acting before that. But when I watched him do that, all those scenes, I was just blown away that he had the ability to sustain the kind of energy and the uh, the engagement in the moment that he that he did. It was just something I'd never seen anybody do that well, <laughs> uh, eight feet away from me. So I, I stood there with my mouth open going, wow, how do you do that? How do you sustain that energy? How do you go through that? How do you keep me engaged and interested? And he did. I mean, I was an audience because I was watching him and we all watched him on television do it as well. But it's too bad you couldn't have seen it live because it was <laughs> it was equally, if not more impressive. Uh, Larry Gelbart was directing the episode. When you direct Alan Alda, you don't necessarily, you know, say too many things mm-hmm. uh, directing him, uh, you know, from the guy who actually wrote it. Uh, is a simple process. You'd basically just let him do what he does and a few little adjustments. But uh, Larry Gelbart was there and he was directing it. And uh, I was I was just blown away. I mean, if everybody could be in could have been in that room and watched him do that, you would have gone, holy moly, that is spectacular. So that was the day I fell in love with that whole process and, and his ability to do what he did. I kind of barely remember the episode, <laughs> to tell you the truth. <laughs> I really, uh, and again, it goes back to being a fan and being, uh, being there, uh, you know, yeah. employed. Um, but I, uh, that's the significant part of it for me is, is remembering what he did and being so blown away by his ability and his talent. The plot of the episode is that he crashes his Jeep and he has blood coming from his head. And he's worried that if he goes to sleep, he has a concussion that he won't wake up. Mm -hmm. So the point of him talking through the entire episode, this this monologue that he does is for him to stay focused and conscious so he doesn't slip away and and maybe not never wake up again. Yeah. So that's the overall plot. And I have a couple of questions before I go a little bit further into the background of this episode. You say you were there. Is that because... You were his stand in still at the time? I think so. Okay. I think so. I I was there. I was either there because I had shot something or was about to shoot something or was getting mail or (laughs) I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I I probably was. Uh, That would have been towards the end of the time when I was his stand in. But uh, I, maybe I was. I, I don't exactly remember, but I was there. I know I was there. So now Larry Gelbart writes the episode. He also directs the episode. And Larry Gelbart didn't direct that many episodes of MASH. I mean, he was he was the creator. He wrote, but he only directed a handful of episodes. Was there a higher level of pressure when Larry <laughs> was the one? Directing the episode? I don't think so. Uh, Larry was a very uh, a quiet guy. He didn't come at you with a lot of pressure. And he was such a nice person that you never felt that, you know, if you didn't do something right, he would be upset with you. He was just a nice man. And so you didn't feel really any pressure. All you wanted to do, I guess, if you felt any pressure is that you wanted to please him so bad because he was such a great guy and such a talented individual. So that would be the pressure. There wasn't any pressure considering the fact that he was the boss and the executive producer. It wasn't that. So no, it it wasn't, uh, there wasn't any more intensity about, you know, fearing not being very good. You just wanted to be good because you wanted to please him so badly. To give credit where credit is due, he wrote that episode along with Simon Muntner. And the excellent book, TV's MASH, The Ultimate Guidebook by Ed Solomonson and Mark O'Neill They have commentary on a lot of these episodes from Larry Gelbart. And I just want to read quickly. This is in Larry Gelbart's words about the episode Hawkeye. 
The reason for doing it is because it represented a terrific writing and acting challenge. And by season four, the challenges were getting tougher and tougher. Aldo was very helpful in terms of the script as well. It was not his idea. but He contributed several bits and ideas to the script. While there's many an episode in the first four seasons that I think were complete or partial misses, I can't say I feel that way about this one. So what I gave from that is people who say, well, this was just uh, some kind of ego project for Alan Alda. Well, Alan Alda didn't write the episode. He didn't come up with the concept of the episode. It was all Larry Gelbart. He said Alan contributed some ideas for it, but it wasn't an Alan Alda vanity project by any means. And also Larry Gelbart thinks it was pretty much a perfect episode. And I fall on Larry's side. This is an episode, like I said, a lot of MASH fans don't care for, but I love this episode. I love Hawkeye from an acting standpoint. And I, I've done some acting myself. I love that the entire episode is Hawkeye and it truly shows the power of Alda's performance. And it also is a uh, credit to Larry Gelbart's words that one man can carry an episode, a full episode of a popular television show all by himself. Yes, he had supporting players in the Korean family who had a couple of lines here and there, but 99.9% of the dialogue in that episode was all Hawkeye. And for you to be able to sustain that for an entire episode and make it interesting mm-hmm. is an amazing accomplishment. Mm-hmm. So I really enjoy that episode. And I'm, I'm glad to hear that you have fond memories of that episode as well. Watching Alan Alda be magnificent. Yeah, uh, great. That's, that's terrific. That's exactly the way I felt. And uh, when I stood there and watched it, I was just blown away. So, it is, you know, any actor w- watching that has to really pay attention to the wonderful way he navigated through that part and navigated his own emotions and navigated physically. He's a very interesting guy because when he gets into physical things, if you ever watch him eat, <laughs> he eats with great gusto. He he really, he's into <laughs> eating. He just eats with every part of his body. Okay. You know, when he used to do those makeout scenes with some of the actresses, I thought, wow, because he really did that really, really intensely too. He did, I mean, you know, there's, there's a difference, but he, he does, he does everything with a great deal of, of commitment. That's what I saw there that that really woke me up and opened my eyes to that ability and how he had that at his fingertips to be able to do that. And to, like you say, to keep everybody's interest and to sustain it for that long, an entire episode. That's that's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. So, yeah, great. We love that episode. So we'd love to hear from listeners. Is Hawkeye an episode that you love or is it an episode that uh, is among your least favorite? We'd love to hear from you and you can uh, reach us at mashmatterspodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Twitter, on Facebook, and you can call and leave a voicemail 513-436-4077. Cool. Okay. Next question comes from John Hunt. And he says, we are still waiting to hear all the intriguing scuttlebutt (laughs) surrounding the Johnny Hamer voiceover incident in Fade Out, Fade In. So this goes back to, my goodness, episode one, two of the podcast. Somebody said, hey, I was watching the episode Fade Out, Fade In and noticed that there was a scene where Igor's talking, but it's not Igor's voice. It's actually Johnny Hamer who played Zelmo Zale. It's his voice. What the heck is going on? And you said, you know, that's a great story, but I'm not ready to talk about it yet. And I said, okay, I'll just ask again down the road and see if you're ready to talk about it. So, hey, Jeff, Mm -hmm. are you ready to talk about this incident? You know, Ryan, that is a great story, but I'm not really ready to talk about it yet. And who's Johnny Hamer anyway? I don't remember that name. Oh, well, you know, I will. It's just something that I have to work on. I have to uh, come up to speed with it in my own head that I can reveal what happened. That I can go into detail about it. Uh, it probably won't be as interesting to anybody when I actually tell it. Uh, but it is a reality and it is a behind the scenes thing that you're not going to hear from anybody else anywhere about what happens on a sound stage and what happens to actors and how they deal with various things. So it might be kind of interesting in, to some, but yeah, I'm, I'm not quite ready. Maybe another, maybe a couple of more episodes and I'll, I'll be there. So 
Ask me down the road again. Tune into episode 74. 74th <laughs> and 112th Street. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I will. I will. I really will. It's but but I'm just not quite ready yet. OK. All From right. Randy Cole. Bla- I, I don't know how to pronounce. I guess Cole Bla Cole Bla Cole Bla Cole Bla Cole Bla. I'm going to say Cole Bla, Cole Bla. But I, I don't know. Randy, you know how to pronounce your name. You pronounce it for us. <laughs> I hope he does. <laughs> You know, I, I, I'm intrigued by what he wrote. He says, guys, uh, you like to say you do a great job on the podcast. I'm a 45 year old guy who grew up watching MASH with my dad. The show started a year before I was born and ended just before my dad passed. So I treasure the time I had watching with him, which is really touching. I, I hear that all the time and I think it's a really wonderful thing. Uh, I still watch as often as I can. The show has brought me so much happiness during not so happy times. Well, I'm very happy it did that. He goes on to say, I found out, this is actually a little scary, I found out that when I was younger that my brother used to party on a regular basis with a cast member of the show. Whoa, I wonder who. (laughs) Which member, you ask? Yes, which member, I ask? The esteemed Jeffrey Maxwell. You might not remember him, Jeff. It was the 80s. (laughs) So his name was Russ Colblay. And he was a bartender back then. And I used to love hearing the stories of all the celebrities he met. Wow. What an interesting thing. I'm I'm not sure I want to remember it. <laughs> um, you never know. Uh, <laughs> so are you saying that you don't remember Russ? Uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't remember Russ Colblay. Now, I... I I kind of do. Now, let me just throw up. This is hands waving in the air stuff. Wow. You just like contradicted yourself there, you know. Well, uh, let me go back. It could be one person. Maybe his name was Russ. And he used to work at a restaurant, a really cool, great Italian restaurant called Josefina's. And it was in, I think, Studio City, California. And I used to frequent Josefina's quite a bit because it was great food and Great. You sit at the bar and have a drink and then go eat a, a whole bunch of pasta and have a great time. So I really love the, the restaurant. In fact, um, a lot of famous bands went through Josephina. So there was a lot of great music in there, too. So maybe uh, Russ, maybe it was Josephina's. If it wasn't, then I don't know who he is. <laughs> don't know. I have no idea. Sorry. So uh, Russ may or may not have been a positive influence on your life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I hope he was. I hope there was no security or police involved because that would be bad. I think he would have mentioned that in the uh, email. Probably would have. He, he's going to leave a message and he's going to somehow, you know, if you want to keep that private, please send me a gift card for three hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> Don't do that, Randy. Don't do that. But we're really happy that you watched the show and we're made happy by it. That's a that's a happy thing. So thank you for writing that, Randy. Yes. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate the nice words about that. And love hearing the story again about the connection watching the show with his dad. Yeah. Uh, so Timothy Burleson, he wrote in about a favorite Igor quote oh. from the finale. He said, watching goodbye, farewell and amen again and just saw what I think is my favorite Igor quote. You know what? I think it would be better if you said the quote than me reading it. OK. Timothy, here it is. Your favorite quote. Don't worry, sir. I always wash my hands before I dig latrines. Ta-da! And <laughs> Timothy, thank you for bringing it up. And please send me a $89 residual for saying that. In the form of a gift card. A gift card. Or <laughs> 700 of them. Do we get residuals from this? I don't know. Do I? Get, I don't probably not. Uh, well, I, th- I think we'll get residuals, but not the kind of residuals you want. <laughs> there will be residual <laughs> effects coming from this episode. Yes, I guarantee. And from all the way from Mumbai, India, from M. Cam on Twitter. This is from Twitter. M. Cam says, just for your information, here in India, I started eating ribs only after watching this episode. I've tried the 29 years that I missed out. Not sure I understand that. That's in reference to Adam's ribs. Adam's ribs. After that episode, we talked about that episode uh, in a podcast episode a few episodes back. I'm going to see how many times I can say the word episode in one sentence. (laughs) And Cam on Twitter wanted us to know that that they only started eating ribs only after watching Adam's ribs. I guess at the age of 29 is when Am Cam saw Adam's ribs and then started eating ribs. The 29 years that uh, they missed out on eating ribs, you know, now they're living in regret and... uh, that's all in reference to Adam's ribs. Well, thank you for translating that because I had no idea what they were talking about. I but have no idea what I just said, by the way. I don't. 
No clue. I blacked out it's- halfway through. <laughs> Okay. I'm telling you, uh, this is episode yeah. 13 and it's Kurt. Anyway, um, Am Cam. So this is interesting. Ryan, I asked you and you said that you weren't sure. We, we don't know whether Am Cam, and we don't mean this to be offensive in any way, shape, or form. We're just, well, I'll say it for myself. I'm just stupid. <laughs> is Am Cam a male name or a female name? I'd, I'd love to know. I don't know. It's a beautiful name. Looking at Amcam's Twitter profile, I cannot tell if he is a he or she is a she. Okay. But hey, you know, I appreciate you listening and following us on Twitter and being a part of the MASH community all the way from India. How about that? We've heard from India. We've heard from New Zealand, Australia, England. We'd love to hear if you're some other country other than the U.S. We'd love to hear from you, too. Where are you listening to mash matters let us know through twitter or facebook or email us at mash matters podcast at gmail.com we've even heard from the irs which was disturbing <laughs> but anyway yeah they keep leaving us voicemails i don't understand hang up on them don't answer yeah. those. we're not going to send you a gift card irs so forget about it speaking of voicemails i have a surprise for you <gasps> normally when a voicemail comes in i will send a recording of it to jeff for him to hear but i'm going to surprise him with a voicemail right now. He has not heard this voicemail. Oh my gosh. Don't worry. There's nothing bad in this. There's no extortion <laughs> plot. There's no uh, request for gift cards or anything here. This isn't that bartender calling in going, Hey, where's my money, buddy? As far as I know, <laughs> no, actually, you know what? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> this is very interesting that you bring that up because Randy, who who wrote in about his brother, he said his, his brother's name was Russ. Yes. This guy's name is Russell. Well, good night, folks. I'll be in the car. <laughs> Lock up when you're through, Brian. You'll be fine. <laughs> Turn the lights out when you leave. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. Okay. Honey, so... start the car. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so anyway, here is a voicemail oh. that came in oh. from Russell. All right. Hello, Jeff and Ryan. My name is Russell. I'm calling from Washington State. just want to take a minute to simply just share my story with MASH. I started watching MASH when I was 28, and it hooked me, so I, I started buying the DVDs. And it did take me a few years to complete the series, but now I own the whole series. Plus, I have the Martinis and Medicines box set. And over the years, the show has seen me through some gut-wrenching times. And I'm now 44. It is simply a part of the fabric of my life. But there are a few actors I actually want to meet in person, as I'm firmly aware that who they play on TV or in a movie is not who they are in real life. However, there are some I would like to say thank you to, and among those are you, Jeff. I want to thank you for doing your job on MASH well. I know to many actors the role they play is just a job, but I'd like more of them to understand what they do reaches some of us on a deeper level. And in listening to this podcast, I was delighted to hear Jeff say he now gets what MASH means to so many people. Jeff, Private Igor makes me laugh. I wish he had more lines in the series. So thank you for doing your job well, even though you weren't always thrilled to be doing it. From the looks you would get on your face to lines like, yes, sir, yes, sir, what? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. You endeared yourself to millions. And I'm not much into the actors themselves, but the characters they play in MASH are dear to me. The show speaks to my soul, and Jeff Private Igor is part of that. And when I can't sleep, I turn on MASH, I turn the volume to low, turn on the subtitles, and I read the show. This relaxes me, and I simply just drift away. And I'll end this by saying, when not much else is right, MASH is. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff and Ryan, for putting on this podcast. It's great. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'm really touched by hearing that. My goodness gracious. And not only am I touched by hearing that, but who is that guy? He expressed himself very well. He did, uh, didn't he? Gee, yeah, that was a beautiful monologue. Yeah. I, gee, Russell, thank you very, very much for saying that. I, I, uh, I, I'm sort of speechless. I, <laughs> you know, at, at the time when you're doing a show like that and you're involved and you're a guy making a living and trying to make a living and, and trying to do the best you can in an environment that you're not necessarily totally familiar with. Uh, it can be intimidating, but it's actually part of what allowed me to be Igor because I allowed Igor to be intimidated too. Just a little acting thing. Um, 
I felt intimidated, so I let Igor feel intimidated, and that was truthful. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that those moments that I was in uh, did what they were supposed to do and worked is just uh, is really, uh, really touching. I really appreciate you saying that. I thank you, and I'm I'm glad I did what I was paid to do. <laughs> and thank you for watching. And I, I'm uh, I'm really uh, I'm deeply touched. Thank you for that call. I appreciate it very, very much. One line that really stuck out to me that he said is that when not much else is right, MASH is. And I think that's just it. You know, yeah. when all is going to crap here in the world and even when you turn on MASH, even though that was set in an awful place and an awful time and an awful situation, it was still right. And it was right for the time it was on the air. It's still right today. I guess what we're trying to say is MASH matters, right? Ooh. Ooh, you're good, Ryan. That was good. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's true. I, and <laughs> again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's true. Having doing this really has opened my eyes to what MASH and how MASH matters to everyone who watches it. I, I didn't yeah. know that before. I knew everybody liked the show and I knew it was a big hit on television. And as a business, I knew it was a big successful uh, franchise for 20th Century Fox and CBS and all the people that own part of it, <laughs> which I don't, but other people do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you know all of that, but I, I continue to be touched by the responses and hearing everybody. And I am learning. I really am learning why MASH matters to everybody. So thank you for everybody. And thank you to everybody. And thank you for saying all those wonderful things. And we will continue to bring all of these wonderful stories. Um, about all this, these wonderful people and the wonderful show, as long as we can keep talking. And at the beginning of the episode, we tease that there is a special guest joining us on the next episode. And this is somebody who we've been trying to connect with for a while. And I think that it's going to be uh, somebody that a lot of MASH fans are going to be excited to hear from. Jeff, would you like to announce who our special guest is on our next episode? <laughs> That was a drum roll. It wasn't a very good one, but. Oh, that's what that was. Yeah, that was, that wasn't me having a stroke. That was a drum roll. I thought you were doing vocal warm ups or something. Yeah. I didn't know what you were doing. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, yes, we are going to have a special guest and that special guest is Kelly Nakahara. Better known to you as Nurse Kelly. Yes. And we're very excited about it, not only because she's Nurse Kelly, but also she will reveal her current status, her current health status, which I'm just going to. Well, I won't say anything. We'll let her tell you. Right. So that's very exciting for us. Very exciting. So look for that in episode 14. And hey, it looks like we actually survived episode 13. Barely. Wow. We're still here. We're $25 poorer, but we're still here. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yeah, we are. But we made it. Thank you. I don't know if the listeners made it all the way through this episode, but we did. So <laughs> if you did, if you made it all through this, God bless you. Thank you for listening. Oh, and oh, oh. Before, wait, before we go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Before we go, one thing I wanted to say, because at one point I asked what you're doing when you're listening to the podcast. Yeah. And uh, oh, I'm looking for one guy. He wrote in. I just want to say he said uh, Dustin Wilde. Uh, hi, Jeff and Ryan. My name is Dustin Wilde. I live in uh, Albrightsville, Pennsylvania. I'm 44 years old. Grew up watching the show with my folks. I'm a big fan of MASH and I am so enjoying the podcast. Thank you for saying that. Uh, so forth. So on. you asked me to write in telling when we listen to the podcast. I am a custodian for a middle school. Very cool. I work second shift, so I put on the headphones and listen to you while I'm cleaning my area. Cool. Keep up the good work. Looking forward to future podcasts. Great. Dustin, thank you for telling us that. And get back to work. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, this has been fun. Are we done? We're done. We're done. We'll see you next time with Nurse Kelly. Yay. Bye, Ryan. Bye, Jeff. Bye, Jeff.